conservators. We have two speakers, Melvin Okowiak. I'm just going to talk. All right. Good. He's a senior conservator at the Museum Conservation Institute, Smithsonian, at Washington, D.C. Melvin received an MS from Windsor Museum Art Conservation Program, University of Delaware, and a BS in Arts Geo from Springfield College. He's been a Smithsonian since 1989 and is involved in projects in the fine arts, anthropology, archaeology, and the history of technology collections. Since 2004, he has led MCI's use of new and advanced facial and spectral imaging techniques such as 3D scanning, 3D um, microscopes, and other computational and digital imaging. E. Keats Webb, our second speaker, is an imaging specialist, Museum Conservation Institute, Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C. Webb graduated in 2007 from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a BFA, uh, BFA in photography. And in 2010, she started her own imaging business focusing on science, scientific and computational imaging and event photography. Her work includes scientific, computational imaging, research, technique development, digital assessment management, and video. And I will turn it over. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm from uh, a branch of the entertainment industry at the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, Keats and I um, uh, work at the Museum Conservation Institute. Um, maybe you do know a little bit about the Smithsonian. Um, it's, uh, it has a fairly large collection, 144 million objects and specimens. 19 museums and galleries in uh, the National Zoo, a number of research centers, uh, uh, 12,000, more than 12,000 employees and volunteers, uh, 24 uh, million uh, visitors annually, uh, 183 million web visitors a year. Uh, this year we're on track to have even uh, higher visitorship in both uh, categories. And uh, we're a pilgrim, pilgrimage destination, as we say. Uh, a lot of people come and don't know why they're, they're coming, but um, there's a whole mess of them. Um, as I said, we're at, uh, the, at MCI, and uh, MCI is a smaller group among the Smithsonian. Uh, there's about 25 full-time employees, and uh, uh, at any time, we might have uh, 10 or more um, uh, postdocs and uh, other fellows. Uh, we have lots of interns this summer. Um, so it's a, a pretty uh, wide-ranging group uh, that includes not only the um, uh, imaging studio uh, that Keats and I uh, work in, but um, a number of uh, material scientists, chemists, uh, doing analytical chemistry, which includes uh, protein chemistry, uh, x-ray diffraction, Raman spectroscopy, SEM work, and on and on and on. Just to kind of give you the, the scope of our work, we're just one small part of the whole enterprise, but we work together on um, uh, projects uh, Imaging is an intrinsic part of many, many of the projects. Um, we also do um, uh, multispectral and hyperspectral imaging, uh, infrared UV uh, imaging, uh, gigapixel imaging, uh, um, uh, 3D microscopy. Um, but again, this is uh, uh, an important part of of what we're doing, uh, the subject of today's uh, talk, looking into the different uh, methods for uh, uh, collecting 3D and pseudo, pseudo uh, 3D uh, information. Uh, what we're going to do is look at uh, uh, an object, uh, a humble uh, carved wooden object, which is painted, and uh, it's a small object. It's not a building. We don't do architectural things uh, typically. Uh, or un it would be unusual for us to be involved in large architectural projects. Um, and what we wanted to do was get a sense of how a number of these techniques, um, uh, RTI, um, uh, uh, QuickTime, virtual reality, uh, 3D scanning, um, uh, photogrammetry, how do they uh, fit in with our workflow 
what parts of it uh, translate to the shop floor. I'm a conservator. I'm not a scientist. I don't even play one on TV. What I do is uh, support other researchers and um, uh, uh, our own research across the institution and occasional uh, collaborative work outside the Smithsonian. And uh, uh, I already have my profession. I don't need a new trade, but there's uh, plenty of, uh, of ways for us to cross collaborate. Um, so what we're going to look at is uh, uh, a number of these techniques and our um, nascent uh, experiment to look at the same objects in different, um, um, uh, with these different techniques. And what we've compiled in your handout is, uh, I think, a better way to present what, uh, what we ended up with than to try to put it in a, in a PowerPoint. And you can kind of read it as, uh, as uh, you have time later. I'll go over uh, some of the uh, uh, most important um, uh, aspects, and uh, you can kind of view it as, uh, at your leisure. Um, it's probably the easiest way for us to do this. It will run through a short uh, video, the techniques that I'm going to show you, and the sort of the application side of it. This, uh, again, this is a a small wooden object, uh, maybe a, a foot across. Uh, it's carved out of softwood. Um, the underside is not coated with the paint. It's somewhat um, uh, reflective, um, but it didn't really pose any uh, uh, problems for any of the techniques, or it shouldn't have, because it's not too glossy, it's not too dark, it's not too bright. Um, it is not exceptional. It is going to play. Um, a quick run through the techniques of the QTVR is first. Um, we use 36 images uh, set up on a stage. Um, we try to light very uh, equally. Um, and pretty much the same uh, idea here with the uh, HD video. Uh, it's very quick technique. Um, uh, as Keats will, uh, will allude to, it, it doesn't surprise you that you conceive of this as a 3D object. Um, uh, RTI has been uh, 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 brought up a number of times, so uh, luckily you don't have to uh, hear us tell you about it again. We will go uh, through the product of the RTI, but not anything in the conceptual uh, method. Um, Photogrammetry has been covered a lot too. We're lucky we're at the end of the day. Um, and uh, probably none of this is uh, surprising uh, to you. Um, this was using uh, a 1, 2, 3D catch to uh, um, uh, make a model, a 3D model. Um, we have a structured light scanner, a uh, uh, Broichmann structured light scanner. There are a lot of products from that. Of course, you have uh, uh, the points, the mesh. You have uh, uh, substandard color capture, but you do have color. Uh, the first area um, that we produce is sort of uh, the baseline for a very high quality um, uh, data set was uh, 3D scanning. And um, our Broichmann scanner for this project was at a sort of a mid-level um, resolution, which is about 60 micron, which is a lot different than architectural stuff. Um, uh, and it's pretty rapid. The, the amount of data that you get is uh, um, uh, quite large, but the file size is not huge. Uh, uh, and I'm talking about you know hundreds of megabytes, a few hundred, a couple hundred. It's not a tremendous amount of um, data. Uh, this is a true 3D uh, capture technique, uh, very high resolution. Uh, you get good uh, metrology, especially on a subject like this. Um, uh, you have a lot of potential to reprocess and do comparative analysis uh, in a large group of objects um, and uh, uh, many uh, uh, 
products can come from that, both virtual and, and real. You can go back to reality and uh, print or mill. Um, the downside of it is that um, you cannot scan highly reflective or translucent surfaces or black or white uh, uh, objects or black and white together. Um, and you need a low ambient light, so it's not good for uh, uh, high noon out in the, uh, out in the field. Um, uh, but with control of ambient light, you, you can certainly do it uh, off-site with a battery or um, a generator. Um, the equipment cost is pretty high. Um, comparatively, again, everything in, um, uh, in, uh, um, uh, in a comparative way. And uh, the, you really do need engineering skills to, uh, to master. Um, the color uh, capture is uh, fair to Midland. And uh, so um, that said, it still metrologically is the, uh, the touchstone. The other technique we used was uh, photogrammetry, uh, one, two, three D catch. It's simple. Uh, the, the processing is done in the cloud. Um, so it's uh, uh, pretty uh, low in terms of uh, computational need. Um, uh, this too is a true 3D uh, product. And uh, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna move a little bit more quickly. Like I said, you can um, certainly uh, read this yourselves. Um, we had good results, but not always. So it's, it's kind of surprising when it would work and not. And I wanted to point out the way that we set up was uh, um, uh, using a, a stage and rotating the object and having really tight control on the lighting. So if something went wrong, we knew it was the object or the processing and not our um, setup. Um, so jumping into the pseudo 3D imaging, one of the things we like to talk about and with the imaging studio and the imaging that we do there is we have two and a half D and pseudo imaging techniques. And so they're not giving you a mesh or a point cloud or the measuring capabilities of a true 3D imaging process. But in some cases, pseudo imaging or pseudo 3D imaging is enough. And so this is jumping into that pseudo 3D imaging, reflectance transformation imaging. Um, the top image is a composite image that just looks really cool. Um, so it's strips of the specular enhancement without the color component, and then also just the normal color image. And it, again, it just looks really cool. And this is our setup that's um, unique to our studio right now. Um, RTI is great because it's a low equipment cost. A lot of the stuff Carla covered, um, you have, a lot of people have this equipment already. So it's not a big jump in buying a new scanner. Um, you have a high resolution based on the camera system that you're using. Um, the final product's interactive and it has a simple user interface um, where you can continue your research and use that. Um, it's portable. A pro and a con is that it's still being developed. Um, that can be a really good thing, but it also means there's something that's, that we're still waiting on, including um, the measurement capabilities, and it's open source. So there are some challenges with RTI. It's not perfect on everything, but it's also a really great candidate for some objects. QuickTime virtual reality, um, it's very much a pseudo 3D imaging technique. Um, it gives you the round view of an object. You can see all the way around it. In this case, we did um, the top part of the mask and also the underside. So if you just need to see the object, not make any measurements, it can be a great technique. We used um, pretty much a lazy Susan, a turntable, did 10 degrees and ended up using the same setup for um, photogrammetry, also used the same image um, set. So it's a low equipment cost, moderate skill level, accessible product. You can either have it stitched together so you can move the object around yourself or it can be done as a video and it just moves on, it, on its own. And again, no measurement capabilities and it lacks that true 3D information. The last technique is um, High definition video, very similar for, for with QTVR. Um, we used a turntable, turn the object so you could see the underside and the top side. Um, fairly low equipment costs. A lot of DSLRs now have HD video capabilities, so that can be really easy. It can be 
very accessible on YouTube. A lot of people have YouTube on their phones, their tablets, so they can see that. And if that's the needs for your project, then it can be really great. Um, but again, it's lacking that true 3D information and it doesn't have the measurement capabilities. And you're also throwing out some of that resolution with the video. Uh, I forgot two things. Um, one was that uh, our new uh, secretary, um, the uh, head of the Smithsonian has uh, uh, said publicly and in a number of interviews since he arrived that uh, he wants to digitize the entire Smithsonian collection. Now, we're not going to do it all, not 144 million, but it's going to be at least 10 percent. So we're going to have to get cracking, I think. Um, one of the things that we like about um, the uh, 3D scanning and the photogrammetry is we could um, uh, pass through that data and, uh, and generate um, uh, uh, Adobe uh, Reader um, accessible images that anybody could do uh, cut throughs and take measurements. As long as your metrology is included in, in your model, uh, we've um, uh, satisfied one of our needs and that is for the uh, broadest dissemination. One of the problems that we've had over the years is uh, if you're working with a curator or a scientist and you say, uh, yeah, here's, here's the DVD with your data, uh, and, and they ask, how, how do I look at it? He said, well, you need like a 10, 10 or $12,000 license uh, engineering software, and you can, you can do whatever you want with it. That's not really helpful. So what we, what we strive for is to give them um, as much as possible. And, um, uh, something as accessible and potentially um, uh, uh, long-lived as a, a, a PDF uh, archive document could be a real help for us. Um, this is a synopsis of, uh, of uh, what the, the chart is that you've been given. Uh, what, we're, what we're really concerned about is um, the truthiness, the 3D-ness of uh, anything. And um, obviously with 3D scanning and photogrammetry, um, you, you have the data. You can, you can see for yourself. Um, when you have uh, digital video, um, uh, uh, QuickTime virtual reality, uh, it's easy to convince a user that uh, um, they're seeing a 3D object. They've already been fooled their whole lives. They've seen movies. You don't have to explain, oh, this refresh rate is so fast you can't even process it. It's not really 3D. They just assume that it is. So if, if it's about sharing um, for the widest uh, possible number of people, then those techniques are, are really good. Um, with uh, things like uh, resolution, uh, the 3D scanner is uh, tops hands down. That's not uh, even a question. But uh, where we might have had millions of points for the scan data, um, with the um, uh, photogrammetry, the 1, 2, 3D catch, we had over 50,000 points. That was pretty good data. If you're doing um, a, a comparative analysis, even a visual analysis, there's a lot of data in that mesh. If you're doing um, things like uh, planning exhibits, storage, um, building uh, packing cases, there's probably ample data in that. So um, uh, depending on your purpose, this is uh, uh, probably a, a, a worthwhile uh, investment, especially in the short term. Um, we have no illusions that we'll be repeating these exercises. We're not going to start at one end of the Smithsonian with the equipment and the techniques that we have and come out next year having finished everything, and, uh, and that'll be it. And now we can go on to other things. It's, it's uh, going to be a long-term process, but it's obvious that, um, you know, I don't have to convince you that the third dimension exists and is part of our um, uh, daily um, procedures. Um, I think I will go right to the, to the summary uh, remarks, and, and we've probably seen enough of this over the last couple of days. It's uh, self-evident, but 
no single technique um, satisfies uh, all the needs of uh, a collection. And um, uh, in, the, in the third point, um, a combination. You may use more than one technique. We've seen a couple of presentations where at least two techniques were used uh, very successfully. Um, for us, a lot of what we're doing is trying to get um, enough uh, knowledge and experience so that we can have an intelligent conversation with an expert in the subject uh, so that uh, uh, when we're dealing with the engineers, we can engage in um, a, a conversation about what our goals are and what we want to get out of it and what they can and cannot do with the object. Um, uh, so uh, at least we'll pass as intelligent people. Um, and uh, finally, um, uh, we want to be able to uh, help our uh, colleagues in the collections so that um, we can better understand what they're trying to do and, and um, uh, tell them when they actually arrive at a, collect, uh, uh, a question. What, what is the purpose we get people who come and say, I want to do RTI, on, on this and that, and well, that's not really that's not really what you're asking. Or the same thing about 3D scanning. No, you don't really want to do 3D scanning. We can do we can accomplish a lot with RTI. Um, so we're informed and better able to inform. With that, hey, I just hit zero. Spot me on that. <laughs> <laughs>